All right, good evening. Um, I'm going to tie a fly tonight that is an Astros tribute fly. You may have seen my Texas A&M tribute fly, my Texas State Boco tribute fly. Hopefully you have. If not, check them out. Uh, you can see them here on my Facebook page or you can see them on YouTube. Um, search Quiet Man 28 on YouTube and you can watch these fly tying videos. Um, kind of interesting and fun and um, creative time for me. So I thought that I would make uh, a fly that's a tribute to the Astros. I've been a fan since I was a kid and they won last year and I was very excited. Even though I didn't get to watch very much of them because I'm in California um, and I was working. Anyway, so you can see I've got my hat behind there so you can tell uh, what I'm tying. And again, I'm having trouble zooming. There we go. Uh, there. So I'm using my regular, um, as usual, my regular eagle claw hooks. Uh, I've got some white deer hair here. Um, I've got some blue dubbing that I'm going to use that I pulled off of some yarn. Uh, there's the yarn I pulled it off of. Very nice. Uh, I've got some orange uh, foam, craft foam from the regular hobby shop, and, or um, like Joann's or whatever. And then I've got some blaze orange thread uh, for tying. This is, uh, for those of you that are interested, 200 yards of 72D8 aught fire orange unit thread there so uh, in case you're wondering so uh i was concerned because the orange of the foam is a different color than the orange of the thread but then i realized on the hat that the thread the orange and the orange there's two different oranges on the hat too so there we go i'm a little too zoomed in here let me back this off a little bit you can see my messy tying desk here. Um, see if it'll stay focused tonight. So I'm gonna tie uh, what's called a hopper. Um, hopper looks like a grasshopper, and that's why it's called a hopper. Um, so, and I'm gonna call it the Astros one hopper because <laughs> you know a one hopper in baseball is when the ball bounces one time before someone catches it or whatever. Uh, so I start off with my orange thread. And I'll put down a base layer of thread. A base layer means you just start, in case you've never watched one of these before, I like to explain as I go. So I start by wrapping the thread. So I hold the tag end, and then I start wrapping, and then make it wrap over itself so that it holds down the tag end. And I'm just going to give myself a good base. So I'm doing what's called touching turns, where each turn touches the last turn so you end up covering the string or the, the hook completely um, on the flat portion of the hook completely with thread I'll go back forward just to get uh, and you want to make the the um, the shank of the hook rough so that the materials don't slide off very easily I got my little scissors. I need to get my other scissors. Those are too small to use. There. All right. So, um, I've got a roughly cut out um, uh, piece of foam here. I'm going to put down some, some nail polish just to help it bind. Uh, that should be something like super glue. But this will have to do. That's what I use. Put it down so there's a little bit of a tail here. I'm going to bend it over the hook and then just start to bind it down right there. Work my way forward. Keep working forward. Until I get up near the eye of the hook. And then I'm going to wrap backwards again. And this is just going to bring down that foam to a manageable body size. And make sure everything stays on top of the hook where I want it. Keep working forward and backwards until it's a uniform thickness. OK, 
Okay, now I'm going to use my dubbing. So this dubbing is just um, is just the material that makes up yarn. And I have found from past flies that I do not need a lot. Um, this little bit right here is probably plenty. I'm going to take some uh, bow string wax. I'm going to wax the thread a little bit to make it a little more sticky. I'm going to take this dubbing, and when you do the dubbing, you take it and you web it out. Make it, make it thin, so it's a thin, thin layer, but it's wide. And then you take it and you roll it onto the thread. You just turn one direction until it starts to stick. And it also can help if you um, wet your fingers, lick them or whatever, or if you get wax on your fingers. But I think I've got enough wax on my thread here to get us going. Uh, and you just make it, you just turn it till it's even all the way down the thread. Move it up close. So I've got my orange body for the Astros orange, or one of the Astros orange colors. As we all know from their uniforms, um, there's a lot of orange going on. Also, when you roll this uh, the yarn onto the thread, you always turn it the same way. And then it ends up, it, it's kind of like it makes its own yarn. So, um, I'm going to just wrap this around. And the thread is going to hold down the... Um, the dubbing and occasionally you want to stop and turn it again just to make sure it stays tight because it'll start to hang off loose and you don't want it to be loose now uh, this is a uh, tribute fly uh, I'm just doing colors that represent um, the Astros here um, so I am not going to promise that this would catch uh, fish because of the color pattern that I'm using um, these colors are not necessarily something that fish would see naturally, but that doesn't mean that something like a, uh, a panfish, um, sunfish or something like that would not eat it. Um, so don't get me wrong there. Now, um, this is a pretty simple hopper pattern. Uh, so I've got my dubbing now on top of the foam. I've got a tail sticking out here. I've got, uh, this part of the body, which I'm going to end up folding back over to make the head. But I've also, I also want to have some kind of a wing, and I'm going to use white on this, and that'll be the white from uh, the white of the H for Houston. Um, this is from deer, uh, deer hide. This is actually a deer that I took at my cabin um, a while back, a long while back. Uh, I'm just going to take a little, little bit of deer hair here. Deer hair is good for flies because it floats um, the especially if it's winter um, their fur is um, a little bit hollow and thick and so yeah it floats um, I don't know where my deer stuck my hair oh here it is I'm gonna use a hair stacker to make these ends all be the same length Usually I don't care, but I'm going to try it this time. So a hair stacker uh, has two parts. It's got, um, looks like a trumpet mouthpiece a little bit. But um, you just put the hair in point down. Like this. And you just drop it in. And then you tap it. That wasn't an earthquake, even though I'm in California. And then you lay it on its side, and you carefully pull out, and you see all the ends are the same length. And then you can pinch that, like that. You can take out any short ones that are too short. You can trim this up a little bit, like that. And I just want enough to stick about the length of the tail. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to wrap. Let's see, I'm going to go back even some more. Right about here. 
I'll get a couple of turns first and then I'm gonna pull tight hopefully without breaking my thread like that and get a couple more turns in here to make sure that it's snug and then I'm gonna take my scissors and clean this up this these um, stumps okay so I'm gonna bind this down a little bit I'm gonna put a little more dubbing on here to cover up this thread that I'm putting down because I don't want this big glob of orange in the middle of the fly it looks good though in contrast so I'm gonna take a little bit more dubbing just enough not too much I'm gonna come back I'm gonna re wax my thread I just want to wax it so that it actually holds the material turn it on again you saw you could barely even see that dubbing that I used and it's gonna cover this pretty well so now I'm gonna come in like this go over that and it covers it right up go right up to behind the head now I want to take this and I want to bend it a little bit. I don't want to leave a little bit of a head on that. So I'll go there. So this head, um, first of all, it will look like a bug head. Like a grasshopper or a cricket a little bit. At least give that, that look. And then, and you can also dub over that and kind of cover up that part uh, but also when you pull this through the water uh, this little bump right here will kind of uh, splash the water and will help attract fish more okay so I've got that and I'm gonna cut this just about I guess as long as the head you can cut it square off or you can cut it different ways I'm just gonna do it like that uh, move this over a little bit so you can see the color better. Okay. All right, and then I'm going to tie in some legs. So these are legs from a um, a bass jig. It's a, from a skirt. It's just the rubber legs. As you can see. And I took a marker and just colored little stripes. Um, but I'm going to put this here. I'm going to tie on top of this ugly part right here. Get a couple of turns to hold that one on. And then a couple of turns to hold this one on. I'm not worried about the length right now because I'm just going to go back and cut it to the length that I want it. Okay, so I got my legs. I'm going to do my half hitch. Hopefully I can get this past my legs here. There. Half hitch. And I'm just going to go ahead and finish it. I'll do one, two over the finger. I go a finger through the loop and grab the second tag end, put it back where it was, finger through the loop, grab the tag end, pull it through the second time. And I'm going to use my scissors to hold the loop portion. I've got the tag end in my, in my hand. I'm going to pull it down and make sure that it lines right where I want it, right in that groove. I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to get a couple of turns here. One, two, three, and go under, uh, over my finger, under the fly, over my, ah, dropped it. That was good. Over my finger, under the fly, in the same spot, back over the finger. I'm going to go through the loop, grab the tag, pull it through, through the loop, grab the tag, pull it through again, grab the loop with my scissors or you could use a ballpoint pen or any kind of needle or anything that can hold it and then I'm just going to guide it in to right where I want it. 
I'm going to trim my tag end. I'm going to get my nail polish. And get off the extra so it doesn't drip everywhere. And I'm going to pull this foam down a little bit so I can get into where the knot is. Okay. Um, a lot of people use glue to do their knots. Uh, I can tell you from experience, I have a bunch of I have a bunch of old flies in this old pill container. Uh, but I have a bunch of old flies here that I, I either tied them and I didn't like them, or I just stopped using them. Maybe they broke or whatever. And I will cut off the feathers and reuse the hook. Um, and I found that. I have to cut quite a bit to get that thread to come off um, when it's been done with nail polish. So I'm going to take these legs and pull them both back to the length of the tip of the tail and snip them. And I'm going to pull these front wing, uh, front legs forward. Well, they're kind of too short to pull forward, but I'm going to make myself a line here and snip that one. And that one's so they're about the same length. And that gives a water bug effect or a hopper leg effect. Um, you know, just something that attracts the fish. So I have my... I got it too tight. There we go. My orange, blue, and white Astros Tribute Fly. The Astros One Hopper Fly. I bet it would catch fish. I'm looking at it now, and I think that um, a sunfish or a uh, either red-breasted up in San Marcos or a bluegill, a bass probably would go after it if it was the right time of day. So there we go. There's my Astros One Hopper. Hope you enjoy it, and good luck, Astros. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, you can check them out. Uh, check out some more on. Uh, on YouTube, uh, Quiet Man 28. And search for Quiet Man 28, and you can see some more videos. All right. And there we have it. Good night.